Hey y'all, today we will be having coffee with Val. Tuesday coffees with Val. These are my favorite, absolutely. Um, today, this week, I mean, I ended up getting a sugar-free vanilla latte with almond milk and it's absolutely delicious. Thank you, Starbucks, our coffee shop for this week. Last week we went to Fresh and y'all should definitely check it out. This one is the one who wants to add you. Uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about um, what a Christian leader looks like and what it is. So let's get right into it. I will be using my example as a coach because as many of y'all know, I coach 16 year olds, well, girls from 12 to 16 year old. Um, I, I love coaching these girls. They, they bring me life, they bring me joy, and it's a passion of mine. I love volleyball. But what does it look like to be a Christian leader in the secular world, in, in a faith-based place? Um, I think this, this can be exactly explained as you are an agent of Christ. You are an ambassador for Christ. You represent Christ everywhere you go as a person, individual, and that is your brand. You are a Christian, and therefore you model it through different areas of life. Um, I read recently that in order to be a Christian leader, though, and to be a very good one, <laughs> you know, you have to learn the word surrender. So Val, what, what, what are you talking about? I thought we were going to be talking about how to lead people. That is how you lead. You lead through surrender. You lead through humility. You lead through love. And um, I, in one of the books I was reading, Lead Like It Matters, I'll put the link to it down below. You can got, get it in uh, iBooks. You can get it paperback. I think you can get it almost anywhere. It's very inexpensive, and I definitely recommend it. Um, it's amazing. In one of the chapters, it talks about how we need to be able to surrender to God everything that we are and all of our circumstances in life in order to be able to follow the leadership that God wants for us. So kind of like he pours into us in order so we can pour into others, but he can't pour into us if we don't let him. He can lead us in the right direction, but he lets us decide if we want to even follow that direction. So as a leader, that is your first step. You surrender to God and fully trust him that he has complete control of the whole situation. And so in my life, I've, man, if y'all knew me, this is for a later vlog, but my life has been a constant, I need to do this. And this is my plan for today. And I am, I am to the T organized and control freak. I am a control freak. If anyone else is a control freak, give me an up emoji like this Eep. anyways um i am a control freak and god had to really work in my life to surrender that in order so i could lead others at the time i didn't know that i was gonna be a coach but right before i did become a coach god had literally as close as i came to hearing god's voice he had spoken into my life and he said you need to give me control of your life you need to be able to let me do what I want in your life because I know better because I want so much more than you can even envision in your life and when I gave that over to him I kid you not there was this like weight lifted off my shoulders there was this new joy peace and constant like I'm fine you know life may be going down in flames and but I'm fine and not a fake I'm fine like I'm trying to get through my Monday night at 10 o'clock at night drinking coffee while not have 5 a.m. the next morning but and I'm fine because Jesus has paid it all you know because my leadership and my company is in his hands I don't have to worry about the outcome because he already paid it he already resolved it I just need to be able to follow him hear his voice surrender and trust him I think what leaders lack nowadays though when it comes to surrender and trusting God is humility we don't want to admit that we're wrong we don't want to admit that we need God we we are like I can do it myself I can figure it out myself trust me hello I've been there prime example right here if I had arrows pointing at me right here I 
God had to wrestle with me because I I thought I could do it. I thought I could handle I thought I could handle full-time classes by being a full-time student with a full-time job and having full-time relationships and not be burned out and com have complete control over every single situation. Uh, believe me, I didn't last more than a month, um, if even. That is being generous. God had to take over my life and had to be like, hey, give it over to me, you know? It's not, it's not about you, okay? The organizations you work for are not about you. The organizations you work for are for the glory of God. And when you have that vision and you realize why you're doing what you're doing and you're not just doing it to do it, your perspective changes and your workplace changes. As a leader, when you work through humility, you are able to lead with a different perspective, with a free mind and an open mind. Because when you are so filled with control and this has to be done this way and at this time, and it's it's good to be organized, but when you are completely trying to take over God's job, that's when it's game over. You've, you've already lost. You haven't even given yourself the chance. I think being a good leader and a Christian leader without having to really say God's name in the workplace has a lot to do with your values. You know, what are the values of a Christian? What are the values of that? And being able to exemplify that in your daily life, you know, incorporating that into your daily life because that builds character and trustworthiness and people will be able to see, hey, they're different. I want what they have. You know, and if they're if they're not seeing that and they see you just like any other person, then you're doing the average thing like any other person. God doesn't want that. He didn't make us for that. He made us to be unique with different talents and different passions. He wants that for us. You know, he wants to shape us and mold us into this leader that he has already called us to be. In uh, the book that I am linking down below, below Lead Like It Matters, um, it says we must be able to sacrifice our desires and ambitions for success in a way. We have to be able to see it from God's perspective and what God wants to do in our work area. A quote from the book says, Ordinary clay must be transformed to be Come the useful and pleasing vessel the potter intends the potter being jesus and us the clay you know he wants to be able to use us but we have to be able to be humble enough to be like god mold me i don't know who i am right now but without you i know i'm nothing i know i'm not even close to even be a worker for you much less a leader if i want to lead people i have to be able to be led by God. I have to be able to be molded into what God wants because I know he has the, my best interest and the workplace's best interest at heart. But most of all, I think as a Christian leader, you have to learn to love people. I, I don't think you could do any of this without surrender and love and trust and humility. I think these four really encapsulate what a christian leader looks like and the life that we should be living and you have to own it you have to own it you have to believe it and you have to model it you have to believe it and you have to model it you have to believe the vision that god has placed and you have to be able to pour that into other people and help them by encouraging them see that vision and really take it in because they see you and they see that you model it as well um that's all I have for today. And if y'all want um, any type of more information on this topic, I have a blog down below. And so it has a link. And I would love for you guys to go in the discussion section and really talk about it. Or even in this comment section, go ahead and comment your thoughts on this and um, maybe questions. And we can just talk about it because this is Coffee with Val. So um, I am going to end it like our usual um, shoot, like our usual place. All right, ready? One, two, three. Peace out. <laughs>